Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Larry Mouton. I'm Assistant Superintendent of Workforce Development for Mobile County Public School System. I have uh, the great honor to be part of the academies in Mobile as well as career and technical education. And what I feel is are the programs that are really making a difference in our community and workforce development. I was a principal and a teacher in the old days. I was a physics teacher. And my philosophy was that if you don't have a four-year degree, you're doomed to failure. That was my philosophy. I couldn't imagine, you know, because that's what I was told as an academic, that without a four-year degree in something technical, to be honest with you, you were not going to be successful. And there's nothing further from the truth. You know, throughout the spectrum of on-the-job training all the way up to a PhD, there's an opportunity for success for everyone. If you have the work ethic, you're in the right position, you have the proper training, and you can make it happen. For us in the academies, the purpose for what we did is, and do, is to make sure that every student is on a pathway to success. We ask kids, and I have the opportunity to hurt kids' feelings all the time, and I ask them, what are you going to be when you grow up? And they'll say, I want to be an engineer. It's like, you know, classic, and do you like math? Oh, I hate math. And you're not going to be an engineer. You have two options, either start loving math or find a new career pathway. What do you like about engineering? Well, I like, you know, working with machines. Well, here's a lot of great opportunities not engineering. But the problem is that we as educators and these as students and our teachers don't know anything about careers. You know, I ask kids all the time, you ever been to Atlanta before? You see those big buildings? What are people doing in those buildings? No idea. You know, that's the reality. We don't know what's going on in business industry. We don't know how to get in business. I've been for 35 years a teacher, you know, essentially. So my experience as a teacher was my little box called a classroom. And this is why what we do with the academies, this is why what we do with our partners is so very important. You know, we have partners, and all of you in this room have been great partners for the school system for many years, many of you. And traditionally, you know, we had this big barrier on the outside of the school, and we didn't want any of our partners to come into the school. We wanted them to come paint or run wire or do some landscaping. And that was a huge waste of resources. We had lawyers and doctors and engineers and welders, you know, and police officers doing things that had nothing to do with their skill set and had no real value. We have people professionally that are supposed to do all those things. So let's invite you into our classroom and talk to kids about how to be successful, about what opportunities they have in a steel mill, what opportunities they have in an English shipyard, what opportunities, aside from an enforcement option, you have in wildlife. So to talk to kids about what really exists in the workplace, because we don't know. I mean, that's just reality. We as educators know about education. We know about our content area. And so that's the responsibility of business and industry in response to business and industry saying, we don't have any good workers. We can't find anybody to work. We can't find anybody who has a work ethic. Well, where are they supposed to get that experience? Where are they supposed to have an understanding of work ethic? If not, you guys telling them what that looks like, what that is. We have wonderful kids. And those of you who had interns know how great our kids are. And I can tell you, those are a mere small representation of the great quality of students we have. But the reality of it is that when our kids graduate, you know, they've been for the last 12 years coming to work every day, wearing a uniform every day, having a positive attitude most days. <laughs> but as soon as they graduate from high school and, you know, metaphorically fall off the face of the earth where no one's there to guide them anymore, they get into bad habits. Do you know that we drug test in the school system? You know, we have random drug testing in the high schools. What percentage of the kids test positive for drugs, would you imagine? 65%. Isn't that a shame that she said that? Isn't that a shame? But everyone says that. What's the actual rate, would you imagine? I believe it's closer to about 5%. 5%. 5%. We have about 60% of our kids in the pool for testing. We test every two weeks at every high school, 10 kids. 5% test positive. Because drugs aren't free. You remember when you were a kid, well, if you go trick or treat, they're going to put drugs in your candy. Nobody gives their drugs away. I'm telling you, they don't drink. <laughs> but as soon as you graduate and you get a dead end job, you know, you're going to get engaged in you know, unhealthy lifestyle. You're going to make bad decisions. We've trained our kids to be successful. What we need is business and industry to step up. 
and continue the good work that our teachers have done, continue the good work that our academy specialists have done, and continue that pathway. Because as soon as we break that chain, well, somebody else is clipping on that chain, and I guarantee you it's not somebody who's gonna create success like you do. So, you know, last year we had, Christy, how many interns? 109 interns, and that's great work. But you know, we have 800 kids in co-op every year. The problem with our co-op programs is, most of those kids go work at McDonald's and Burger King. It's not real co-op, where they're learning real career experience that equals to the pathway. Now, Burger King and McDonald's are great. You know, if you're on a leadership track in one of those uh, institutions, you can have an incredible career. But what we're looking for is business and industry in our region that is crying out for well-prepared workers, whether it be in public service or anything. And I'm telling you, we have the great product right now. We just need our kids to get a chance. You know, Otokampu does a great job and has done a great job over many, many years of working with our kids and finding super great employees. But we need not just you, not just those 109 kids, but we need 10 times so now. You know, we have 4,000 graduates every year. We need 4,000 juniors to have that experience. Well, today we're going to hear from some of our interns and hear from some of our partners, like Seymour TV, that have done incredible work. My challenge to you guys who are here is continue the good work. Spread the good news. These young people who are interns, the reason we pick juniors is so they can come back and spread the news amongst their peers. The reason that you, know, you guys are out there for us is not just about these kids' experience, but it's also you spreading the good news about Mobile County Public School students, that we have quality students, that the things you see on YouTube and the news that reflect poorly upon us are, you know, are not the true reflection of the quality of students and education we have in our school system. We do great things, and with your help, we'll continue to do even more wonderful things. So, Christy, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. And, and again, my main message today is thank you to business and industry partners for doing the right thing. Thank you students who showcase all the great work that you and your families and teachers have done. And Seymour TV particularly, you all have been a strong supporter and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, at this time, we're going to hear from the city with Ms. Anitra Bell Henderson. She's going to talk with us about the Yes Initiative. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Anitra Bell Henderson. On behalf of Mayor Stimson, thank you for being here. Um, I can only echo what Mr. Mouton said. Last year, we started uh, the YES Initiative, Youth Empowered for Success, where um, the mayor actually went out and we took him to Strickland, we took him out to Airport Boulevard, Spring Hill, Tomanville, Maysville, and no matter where we went, young people said we don't have jobs and we don't have activities. So you know what? That became my job to make sure that these young people were working. And so we set out and the mayor said, well, we're gonna have 100 kids work in our department. So we need to go out and find 100 kids. Well, I only put the application out on social media because we had this marketing budget and we were gonna go on TV and do everything. In four hours, we had 700 kids apply. Wow. At the end of 30 days, we had 4,000 kids apply. And so, I had to get very creative because I'm not going to tell 3,900 young people that you can't have a job. And so we went to the school system and with Mr. Mouton and Ms. July said, how can we help your internship program? And they said, we need businesses to come out and, and support us and help us. And so the mayor put together a package of money where if you hire one intern through this school system's internship program, the school system, the city would pay for an additional one. And so we're up in that ante because we only had, from the money that we had, we only had four businesses to apply. So then I went to Gulf Shores and I said, Gulf Shores, I'm not gonna offer you any money. I know that there are about 3,000 jobs over here and I have kids to apply. I had 12 businesses take on 150 kids last year. And I can tell you out of the 100, 100 that actually went, they all tested uh, negative for drugs. 100% of them were on time, and 100% of them want to come back. And now we have uh, 12 to 13 businesses, 14 resorts, that are going to take on 300 kids next year. So if I have over in Baldwin County, people saying they want 300 kids, 
I need Mobile to say we're going to take 500 kids because they're in our communities, they're in our neighborhoods, they're around the corner from your businesses, and they deserve a chance. Uh, we had from the kids in Gulf Shores to really start to think about their career, uh, to really get serious about school, and to really start thinking about, I can do this. And that's what they need, is just the opportunity and the chance. So as I said, Mayor Simpson is offering again uh, the business funding, where if you, you buy one, get one free. <laughs> but you pay one, we pay one. It will open on the city's website, cityofmobile.org, beginning January the 10th. We will have a kickoff um, in the city for that. But you just apply. It's super simple. You have to be a small business under 200 employees or less. We don't really go under you know, strict criteria besides that you have applied through the internship program that you're going to be a part of it and that you are going to hire one and give us the amount of uh, funding that you need to have the second one available. Uh, it will close on February the 2nd and you will know by March. So by the time they have finished their programming year and about to start their interviewing process, you know the amount of funding that you will have. So it's super simple. I want you to have more than two. I want you to have five or six because I want to go back to Mayor Kraft and Gulf Shores to say, hey, Mobile is doing 500. Can you do 800? Because we want to make sure that everybody who wants an opportunity that is young that we're giving them the opportunity. Thank you. you with those due dates as well as the link to the website following this meeting as well at this time and thank you so much uh, Ms. Bell Henderson talking about the yes initiative with the city we will have Mr. Tim Finnegan and Mr. John Blackwell discuss their perspective of participating in internships and why they got involved and also um, just to give a little encouragement for you to participate as well Thank you, Mr. Lund, Mr. Mouton, for having us here today. My name is Tim Finnegan, alongside with John Blackwell, one of our interns, Maya Mitchell. We're just so excited to be working with Mobile County Public Schools. We work with over 30 schools, and really what we do at Seymour is we're creating opportunities for students to gain hands-on experience in a professional environment. The students that are our number one focus, we have a video we'd like to show you of just some of the activities that our students have been doing just this fall and how that has been able to translate into internship opportunities. Seymour loves to work with students because we love to see lives change. We love to, to work with a kid uh, who, who wants to, to do something in, in, in a career in broadcasting and try to help develop that. Uh, we also help build confidence. We, uh, we try to just instill confidence in kids. And broadcasting is a way of doing that. Being a part of student programs and seeing them uh, maybe not even have any interest in broadcasting, but then their confidence grow as they work through our program, uh, it's just tremendous. And so that's one of the reasons why we enjoy working with students. And that's why the emphasis uh, in our entire program is students. I can't help but love working with students because I actually have two in my household with me. I have two daughters who are currently in school, and they look to me for guidance. It's a perfect opportunity to be a mentor, and it's really cool to be able to see that something special in some kids and be able to help pull that out and help grow it and nurture it. So that is one of the big rewarding things about working with students is just seeing them reach their full potential and you actually have yeah, I really love the programs that we have here at Seymour. Building up students from the elementary school level all the way up to the high school level and giving opportunities for students to be able to gain hands on experience in a professional environment. We love sports, we love the types of work that we do. But giving an opportunity for a student to be able to achieve that at their age, even before they get out to the workforce, that's a powerful thing. And I think anytime that you can make a positive impact in a student's life, that's something. Our Seymour program partners with schools and makes a difference in the lives of students. It really made a difference in mine. Starting at a camp, up into an internship, and now a job. I really appreciate the things that Seymour's taught me, the things I've learned, and people I've worked with. Seymour has really made an impact in my life. The beauty is, it's not just my life. Now I can reach back and impact the 
lot of students to give them the opportunity that I have. And we're going to have some more clips and pictures from what our uh, students have been able to work with during the fall, but tell you a little bit about Willie right there at the end. He was a student, he graduated from LaFleur High School last year. He enrolled in our camps during the summer, then became an intern with us, was working with us during the fall football season last year, and then gradually built up to be able to earn a full scholarship to Bishop State. He's working with their athletic department on a full ride using the skills that he learned through the internship program. And that's the kind of opportunities that we're trying to translate for every student at every school and at every age. That's right, we're even working with elementary level students. And sometimes, I'll tell you what, they give the high schoolers a run for their money. <laughs> so, but we were just really excited this fall to be able to expand the opportunities beyond just the summer internships. We built a whole team of eight to 10 students throughout the year. We had a Friday night show that it was about students. They had the responsibilities, they had a role, they had deadlines to meet. It was a professional environment. It was like, hey, do you really wanna be an engineer kind of example? Hey, do you wanna be a broadcaster? You gotta meet some deadlines. But we have Tamaya with us today to talk a little bit about her journey. She got aggressive, jumped right in, even had her own segment. Good morning, my name is Tamaya Mitchell and I'm a senior at Maddie T. Blunt High School. And for starts, I would really like to acknowledge Mr. Tim Finnegan because I did start with Seymour around late in the summer. I missed the camp. I was in California on a volleyball trip and he actually gave me that opportunity to start late. So I'm very grateful and thankful. I have also was able to start with him during the fall. During the fall, we had the Seymour Insider segment and that's where we broadcast the games and I was invited back to the studio and from then on it transpired. I worked with him and along with many others of his awesome staff at the studio and it was a great experience. And again, I did have my own segment and the name was up in the air but it went by Haya Tamaya. <laughs> <laughs> and from there we talked about, at the time it was the hurricane disaster so I did hurricane disasters and preparedness. Guys, my name is John Blackwell. I'm the president of Seymour. And if you're not working with students, man, you're missing out. Um, you know, I often hear that, that students are the future generation. They're the now generation. And what you do to impact their life now is going to impact your future. And we've got to instill the things that we want them to achieve right now. It, it's not later. It's now. And we've got to harness the energy that they have. Harness the enthusiasm. So at Seymour, there are three things that drive us. Passion. We tap into the passion of the student. And we want to bring that passion out. Purpose. We want to help the student define their purpose. If it's not broadcasting, I guarantee you, in every business, you're going to need somebody that's in PR. You're going to need somebody that has confidence that can stand up in front of a group and talk well and speak well and handle themselves. We train our students to do that very thing. And then pride. We want our students, when they finish our program, for their grandparents, for their uncles, their aunts, anybody, to go, that's my child. We want them to have professional content by the time they graduate that they can be proud of. Something they can put on their resume and say, this is what I accomplished in high school. So that's why we work with students. We are very excited to partner with Ms. Petaway. She has been an incredible partner for us at Viger. We've also partnered with others, uh, all of Mobile County to help with, uh, with sports. But Ms. Petaway has been very instrumental. We had two students that we were, uh, had as interns last year from Viger. They weren't able to make it today because they had some tests that they had to take. Uh, and so we, we regret that because they were going to be able to share their experience from the from the summer, but Tamaya, you did an incredible job. We thank you for, for everything that you did. But I'll say this in closing. Seymour is, is, is developing several products in the future. We develop in our own hardware, uh, our own software, and different things that we're able to integrate. Uh, we have something we call a Magicoder, which is an encoder system that is a basically all-in-one uh, computer that allows people to stream. And so we develop that in-house. Well, we have two products that are on the horizon that when they, when they roll out, 
people are going to be like, they're just going to be wow. And it's going to be an opportunity for, again, for parents to see the, the investment and the impact of what students can do. So we're excited about what's coming in the future of, of Seymour. Stay tuned. We developed a partnership with the University of Mobile. And so we're going to be, begin to do some things uh, very soon coming up at the end of February. So stay attuned uh, to meet to the media. Uh, and you'll be hearing a partnership that we're developing with the University of Mobile that we're very excited about. Again, I'm John Blackwell on behalf of Tim Finnegan and Tamaya. We're very thankful and delighted to be a part of this. Thank you, Mr. Mouton, uh, Ms. Ms. July, for everything that you guys do and for all the Signature Academy and, and just the investment uh, upon what you, what you guys do. Amy, thank you for uh, all that you do to go around and spread that to the schools. And we're delighted to be a part of Mobile County and look forward to anything we can do within your businesses to help you. So feel free to, we'll stay around and visit. Feel free to talk to us at the end. And thank you again for our time. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. And like we said before, Seymour has been an amazing partner. And we're looking forward to that growing. Uh, right now, we'd like for you to hear from another student. The students. Tell the truth. And so we want you to know um, from them how impactful the internships have been on their lives. So right now we're going to have Ms. Brendy uh, Arthur come up and just share with you her experience. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brendy Arthur and I'm a senior from Tichino High School. I had the privilege and the honor of for participating in the summer internship at Auto Food Stainless. That internship changed my life. You don't even know. Um, before this internship, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like a doctor, a bull rider, even like a ship captain. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't have a, honestly didn't have a clue. But before that, I was, I've been in auto mechanics at Citrino High School for the past four years. I've been certified in five automa automotive Automotive Service Excellence class uh, courses. And this year I'm a certified in five more and I'll be a master tech. Awesome. And I knew I was interested in, elect in like electronics and maintenance, different stuff like that, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it. So whenever I began this internship, it opened a whole new world to me. I was on their maintenance crew we did all kinds of stuff. We changed belts, conveyors, pumps, valves, and I welded a whole lot. <laughs> a lot of welding. I loved every bit of it as well. Um, I was also like a honed my welding skills. I learned how to do it at school, and then whenever I went to work, it just made it a lot better. I went through many classes, precision measurement, crane, ma crane maintenance, uh, pumps and valves and just basic machine, machine work, you know, all kinds of stuff. I also went through an eight-hour safety class. I learned how to keep myself safe, others safe, and my mentors, they, they, they taught me how to work well with others, learn how to work as a team, build each other up, and how to speak in front of a group. <laughs> I can never express my appreciation to Autoco Food. That place has changed my life. Like, it was a real deal. Five days a week, five, day, five days a week, 40 hours a week. It was great. My, my incredible mentors, they molded me and taught me, and they, told, they taught me not to be afraid to step into a man's world. I can get dirty, and I can work with the best of them just like anybody else can. I would like to encourage all of y'all to step up and make a change in a child's life. You can change it just like mine was, and you won't regret it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Brindy. And thank you, Odo Kupu, as well, for your continued support in our internship program. Right now, we're going to give you the nuts and bolts of the internship program so that you understand what we are asking as well as our expectations of our students. And you can ask any questions during the uh, this portion of the video, uh, video because we're recording, um, this portion of the meeting, 
um, as well as at the end. So uh, please feel free if you have any questions to ask. So in your folders, there is an employer guidebook that we will be working from or moving through. And this guidebook was put together to take with you so that if you have any additional questions or you need to marinate over a few things with the internship program, you have it at your fingertips. And we try to make it very uh, business friendly for you. So as Mr. Mouton and everyone uh, that has presented thus far has stated, the purpose of the internships is to expose our students to business and industry in fields that give them an opportunity not only to utilize the skills they've learned in school, but to continue to grow and hone those skills and to see what the world of work looks like, feels like so that they can have mentors and connections to continue to groom them and expose them to what's available. So in our internship program uh, that Mobile County Public Schools hosts every summer, this will be our third year of doing uh, our summer internship program and we plan on continuing to grow the internship program because as you see, our students are positively impacted <coughs> by the opportunities that your companies offer them. Part of our requirements on the business side that we ask for any business that participates, we try to be as accommodating to businesses as possible um, in the process as well. We do look for it to be a paid part-time opportunity. And the reason is because our students are spending time and money to get to your place of work and are truly there to do work. And so we want our students <coughs> to be motivated and experience having some funds and going to get a bank account. What does that look like? How does direct deposit work? All of those things that we experience, filling out tax forms, all of that, we want them to have that experience up front because we want it to be as realistic as possible. And when we go to work, we get paid. So we want our students to get paid as well. Now we do ask for a minimum of 15 hours a week. Since this is a summer program. As you heard Miss Arthur, when she spoke at Otokumpu, she was working 40 hours a week. That's up to your business's discretion, how many hours a week that your student works. We just ask that it is a minimum of 15 hours a week so that they can get uh, truly involved in what happens in your place of business. Earnings of no less than minimum wage. We had times when students were getting paid more than the people that were working on the floors in some of our companies. And the employer would say, don't tell them how much you make an hour. <laughs> so we had relaxed that a little bit and allowed businesses to decide how much you would like to compensate your intern an hour. But as I said, we do ask that it is no less than minimum wage for that compensation. So that is, once again, at the company's discretion. A minimum of four weeks is our internship program. We feel like that is enough time for the students to be exposed to what happens and for you to be able to interact and be a part and change this student's life and uh, be impactful for them. But it is not required that they stop at the end of June. So our dates run from June 4th through June 29th. If you want to keep your intern for the rest of the summer, you are welcome to do that. Now, you do have to pay them for the rest of the summer, but you are welcome to keep them for the entire summer. And if you find, because we've had this happen for the past two years, if you find that that student fits your organization and has been the best asset for your company and you do not want to let them go when school starts, that's fine. You don't have to. We can work with you on making sure that that student has an opportunity to leave school during the school day and work half days at your company. So we are able to make some of those adjustments for you because on the other hand, it does benefit our kids to have that exposure. And we've had companies that have done that. And one of our um, companies, Norton Lilly, that student has been there for two years now and they are ready to hire her. They're gonna pay for her to go to school to get her accountant degree and she is working part-time at their company. So that's the kind of benefits because that company groomed that accountant. So now they are gonna reap the benefits of that investment from an internship. And um, one of the final requirements is please assign a mentor to your selected intern. We do have some companies that kind of rotate that because they have different departments in their company and they want students to understand that companies have a variety of positions that you can participate in. Every company has an HR department, companies will have a marketing department, 
in the engineering department, all of those various aspects. So some companies rotate the students every week throughout the department so that they can get an opportunity to see what's available. And they assign a mentor for each one of those departments. That's completely okay. We're looking at what uh, your company needs and how we can assist you in meeting and filling that need while also exposing our students that are in high school that are bringing skill sets to you and that's a big part of our expectations for our students there have been times that internship programs would send you any student you didn't know what skills they had, what they brought to the table, and then realized once they got there that they didn't meet the needs of your company. So that's one thing that we really take seriously in Mobile County Public Schools. We are working to ensure that the students that come into your place of business are students that have the skill sets that you're looking for. Now, are they gonna be pros or experts? No, but they are coming with the basic skills that you need in order to help grow them to where you would like them to be. So part of that is our students have to be enrolled, of course, in Mobile County Public Schools. They do need to be juniors, not only so that they can come back the next year and tell the students behind them how awesome it was and how they need to get ready for that, but also that gives us another year to make sure that we round out any skills that need to continue to be adjusted for our students. And so our students are juniors, and they need to be on track to graduate, and they have to have completed at least one academy course in the area that you are looking to hire a student. So if you are offering a business position, because you need a secretary or whatever the case may be, we're not gonna send you a welder. So we are looking to see what are your needs, what are your expectations, and making sure that we match that with you. So the first process in order for that to happen is we want to make it realistic. We start with job uh, descriptions. Just like we apply to a position based on a job description, we create that as well in Mobile County. And we have a job board where our students will go to see all of the available positions and they are able to apply from there. We in Mobile County are the first <coughs> line of human resources meaning we will go through every applicant to first make sure that they meet the minimum expectations that you're looking for and requirements. And if they do, then we process them through our um, remaining pieces of our internship program. So for example, we are starting the meeting today. This is the initial meeting for businesses that have not participated or may be interested in coming back and just wanna see um, what's going on for this year. And so then we will have, uh, after this meeting, December 14th through January 19th, our academy specialists, there are 12 in our district, there's one academy specialist for each high school. They will then contact you to see what are your thoughts, questions that you may have, uh, how many interns would you like to move forward with, or assisting with helping any, uh, remove any barriers that may be in place for hiring a student. And so we'll create those job descriptions and have those finished hopefully um, by January 31st is the goal. So that we can have them posted on our job board online for our students to then be able to access so that they can start actually applying by February 5th for those jobs. And so as I said, we are the first line of HR. So once we get those job descriptions um, and those applicants, starting in February, we will have the application closed March 2nd. So all juniors in Mobile County Public Schools have from February 5th to March 2nd to apply. When March 3rd comes, that's when we get to work on vetting our students to make sure that they are qualified for the positions that they have applied for. One of the first items that a student needs to complete if they are qualified to move forward is that they must participate in the community mock interview. A lot of our students have never interviewed. And if they have interviewed, it was a very small, quick interview that they didn't work on interview skills or even know what they did wrong or right. So we host a community mock interview, and you'll hear about that and be offered the opportunity to participate, where we bring every possible intern that meets the qualification into one location and it's speed dating pretty much is what it is. Y'all at a table, we send the student to you for 15 minutes. 
you have a 10 minute interview and a five minute portion just to give them some feedback. And we want you to be realistic with them. We want you to be honest because they take that in because they know this can probably help me when I sit for that uh, formal interview. So we do offer that community mock interview that they must participate in. And then March 19th through the 30th, at the employer's convenience, we have uh, interviews scheduled with your interns that qualify, that have completed the process, and that are eligible to actually sit in front of you. Yes, sir? Approximately how many applicants would you expect the employer to interview? So that is a great question. The question was, how many applicants would, the, would we expect the employer to interview for a position? It's actually based on how many positions you have available. So for instance, because all of you are going to participate in the city's yes initiative, the buy one, get one free opportunity, and you'll be hiring two uh, interns at least, we would then sit no more, no less, excuse me, than five, but no more than seven in front of you. So we base that on the number of positions that you have available. So for those of you that are going to hire 10, we would sit about 20 kids in front of you for that. Um, and then after your interviews, you actually select your first, second, third, fourth choice based on the interviews and who you think will most fit the needs that you have in your company for your internship. And so with that, you will provide that to the academy specialist and the academy specialist will then uh, be informed by April 6th as to who you would like to move forward with. That's our due date for that. And then we will have Connect Day. So between April 6th and May 3rd, we will be sending out acceptance and regret to inform you letters to our students. And we do that because they need that experience for those that make it. You want to have that piece of paper in your hand that says that you got the job. And for those of the students that regret to inform you that you didn't receive the position, we need that as a learning tool as well so we can sit down with them and say, okay, you didn't get it this time, but here are some things that we need to work on so next time you can get that position. And so we have from April 6th to May 2nd to have those conversations with students. Because on May 3rd, we have our internship connect day. Everybody has seen the big signing days for athletes, right? Well, by golly, our interns deserve a signing day because they worked very hard to get this internship. They had to go through a lot in order to do that. So on May 3rd, we have our Connect Day where we bring in all of the interns that have been awarded a position and the companies that award the position. And that company, we get to call up that company and show that company's logo, and they get to adorn their company swag on that intern that they have hired. And everybody gets to cheer, and we have band, and we have bands, and we have the cheerleaders, and it's just a big, fun event for both. And that also gives the employer an opportunity to meet the parents at that time of those students. So we have that event on May 3rd for our students, and they start work on June 4th. Now between May 3rd and June 4th, we have the opportunity to do HR work, orientation. We uh, work with the students on making sure that everything that's needed for them to start June 4th is taken care of. So you'll be in connection with the Academy Specialist to make sure that whatever your company needs are, that we're addressing that and taking care of that before they start on June 4th. Any questions about the timeline? All right. So there are two ways, because I'm sure you're asking, how are we going to hire these students? Because juniors can be about 16 years old, 16, 17 years old. Well, there are two ways that we have come across and utilized over the past three years with hiring interns. The first way is through your company's human resources department. And we have a number of companies, such as Otokumpu, for instance, um, and Seymour, that have gone through their own human resources department that can speak with you about that as well. And Marine Resources has used their own HR as well that are here to answer those questions. But a piece of using um, that's needed in order to use your human resources department is by going to the state of Alabama's 
Department of Labor website. Because the student may be 16 years old, uh, it is required for a company that participates on this website to have a apply for a child labor certificate. And so that certificate is just $15 and it lasts you for a year. And this allows you to be able to hire and um, have that student intern work in your company. And if, like I said, if you have any more questions about hiring through your HR department, we do have some companies that are here that have done that, that can answer those questions more specifically as well. Now the other option that we would like to offer, because some companies for whatever reason cannot use their own HR. Their company requires that they go through a third party hiring agency to assume that liability as well as to take care of compensating <coughs> that intern. And so what we offer to companies that are in that situation is um, the Lions HR Pathfinder Alabama program. In your folders behind the agenda, is a little bit of information, a wine sheeter about the Pathway program. Last year was our first year using that particular program and it was great and we look forward to continuing to grow with uh, the Lions HR group. Now what they do, and I'll show you the um, flyer here. So what Lions HR will do for you is work with your business and industry and come to an agreement saying that you would like to use them to assume the liability and the payroll for your particular student intern. You'll tell them how much they, that student is going to make an hour, how long they're going to work, what type of work they will be doing. And that also affects insurance. So what type of work is very important. So when you contact Lions HR and y'all work those things out, <coughs> Lions HR may tell you, hey, we'll need to send out somebody to come and just make sure that you have a safe work environment so that we can cover the liability on that. And so that's a relatively quick process. And then you start the uh, paperwork on the back end with Lions HR, and Lions HR will then contact the student that you have hired and take care of all of the HR paperwork with that student for you. And so they will then pay the student at the end of every week, and you will receive an invoice as a company, you will receive an invoice to then pay Lions HR. But they make the process as easy as possible for companies that need that third party coverage so that um, our students can be employed. And they take that HR piece um, out of the equation for you. They go ahead and take care of that for you. So those are two ways that we have uh, found to be successful in hiring and covering the liability and paying student interns that have participated in the past. We're going to work on updating our website to make sure for our academies to make sure that this information is on there for you because we do understand that you may have to talk with someone else in your company. You may have been sent to represent your industry or your particular company. So please know that we will have more information on Twitter and on our website. At this time, are there any questions that you may have off the top of your head in regards to our process or anything with our internship program? Yes, sir? Uh, do we pay mine for that service? They manage the HR. You do have to pay Lions for managing the HR. They are very upfront with how much that cost will be. So if you tell them uh, this is how long the student will work or this is my budget for the intern, most of our interns cost at most about $1,200 for the summer. Um, and that is if you're paying them more than minimum wage. So we range about that amount for an intern. So um, Lions will have their additional fee that is attached to that. But they will, are very upfront with telling you how much it will cost you, bottom line. <coughs> Any more questions? I have a question for uh, Ms. Bell. Uh, what is the difference yes, about the yes and
Sure. Um, it's a super simple online application. We just ask for the name of the business, what the, the young person will be doing, your hours of work and the wage and the total amount that you're asking for from the city. And from that, depending on the number of applicants that we have, we will send you back the amount that we will be awarding you. Um, in some instances, it was the full $1,200. Um, some people, because we did not have a lot of applications, said, could we hire one more if you have enough? And, and we granted that for you. And how soon can we apply? Uh, January the 10th. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Please ask all the questions you need. Would the uh, Academy Specialists identify themselves? I know a couple of them. Yes. No problem. I would gladly have them identify themselves. We'll start over here at the sign and with Ms. Eubanks. Good morning. My name is Ms. Eubanks, and I uh, am the Specialist for Lafleur High School. Good morning, my name is Kiki Cutaway. I'm the specialist at Fiber High School. I'm Monique Gray, I'm the specialist at Williamson High School. Good morning, I'm the Academy Specialist at Manning Thomas Club. Good morning, I'm Tara Price. I am the uh, specialist at Mary G. Montgomery High School. Good morning, my name is Haley Bailey. I am the Academy Specialist at Theodore. Also, good morning to all of you. My name is Lily Torrens. I'm the Academy Specialist at Murphy High School. Good morning, I'm Amanda Crawford. I'm the Academy ladies that make it all happen from beginning to end and so we do work to make sure that your company has one person that they can always call email text any question or concern so that you can have a quick response and I do participate in the process as well so if um, on the front side you're not attached to a school um, as a direct partner currently you would work with me to start, but once you select your student and from a specific school, that academy specialist will then become the point of contact from that point forward. Because we want to be sure that we're also holding our students accountable. So we don't, June 4th, just send the student to you and then we don't see you again until sometime in the, at the end of the summer where we want to talk about how have things progressed and what are your pros and areas of improvement. So you will see this specialist for whichever school that student comes from throughout the internship program. It's an expectation that they're there at least once a week so that we can be sure that we're addressing the needs of the students but also the needs of business and industry. And we like to keep those lines of communication open. So I do want to reassure you that it's not you with a student um, or 10 students and you never see an adult and a representative from Mobile County Public Schools. Any more questions? Ms. July, I did want to add to, the city is also providing uh, bus passes for young people who want to apply for this internship as well. Of course, the buses only run in the city of Mobile, but transportation will not be an issue um, because all they have to do is apply for it and we pay for the bus pass for the summer. Kristen, do you want to have um, some of our people who hosted interns introduce themselves? Or? Yes, we can. If we don't mind starting in the back. John Morris with Alabama Marine Resources on the Alabama Island. Oh, Willis with Alabama Marine Resources on the enforcement side. I think that's all on that back row. And next row, no, and next I'm row. Up oh, here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Jerry Walker. Um, I'm new to uh, Auckland, but uh, new to the I'm very excited for me, so. Yeah. Uh, Eric Earl, uh, Alex Carr, and yeah, I'm here. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, you're great. You're awesome. You're okay. And I think you're next. Marcus Richard, Mobile Arms, James, PT, and Lisa. And all of these companies have participated um, for the last two years. They were our trailblazers in our internship program. And we appreciate everything they have done 
um, for our students and helping to grow our students and making sure that their needs are met, but also exposing them to the companies and what they do. So before you leave, please make sure that you connect with these businesses to get their perspective. Um, Alabama Power did use uh, the Lions HR group this past year. And anyone else here? Um, they would be able to answer some questions as well from the business perspective with using that third party uh, company also. We do have a few people that before we go we would like you to hear from, but before we do that, in your folder there is a half sheet of paper. It is titled Business Partner Internship Interest Form. This is not a marriage certificate between you and Mobile County Public Schools summer internship program. We do this so we can gauge where our companies that are here are in their thoughts on moving forward with an internship. So we do ask that everyone complete this form for us before they leave and turn it into the two specialists sitting at the uh, welcome table so that we can, if we need to move forward and get things going, we can have that process started. Or if there's any concerns or bridges that we need to cross, we can go ahead and start that process as well. But before we wrap up, and if there aren't any more questions, but like I said, we will be here uh, to answer any additional questions you have. We will have uh, our student that is now an employed young man um, with Seymour speak, and we will also have our students that participated in the summer internship this past summer introduce themselves, tell you which school they attend, as well as what company they work with this summer. Oh. I guess I should. My name is Frank Bear. I'm the director of farm instruction within the district. If you did not know, we also participate, the district does, with hiring students. And we had these two young, wonderful young people here work with us in supply operations and they did a magnificent job. They're also, I'm proud to say, members of our DRPC program at two different schools in our district. So we are uh, very pleased with what we've seen. We've been participating the last since it started. So yes. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you. And, and thank you for holding me accountable. I love it. Um, yes, Mobile County does uh, participate in a summer internship program as well. We hired about 20 students this past summer, and we're looking forward to doing that and hopefully more as well. We don't just ask it of business and industry. We also participate ourselves. Um, we'll go ahead and have our students start. Well, not a student. Um, graduate of LaFleur High School, now a student freshman at Bishop State Community College, and not only has Seymour given me the opportunity to gain work experience in a field that I really, really want to pursue, but they've also allowed me to gain knowledge, um, to allow me to gain a free education. Um, I now work at with the athletics program at Bishop State, doing different type of graphic work, and uh, also we're trying to start a broadcasting program at Bishop State with the things that I've learned at Seymour. Um, it's funny how John was just telling me, um, he mentioned to me how, you know, at the camp when I first started my 11th grade year, I didn't really know much about broadcasting or anything like that. Um, but I came to the camp anyway, and you know, I did the best I could, and I felt like I was the best uh, anchor at the camp, but I didn't win that award. <laughs> 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 but what did happen, I did, we, we as a team, before high school, did win best broadcasting team. And once I realized that, that, you know, meant a little bit more to me than just an individual award. So that right there was the beginning of the lessons that these guys have taught me about teamwork. You know, and not only did I not win the award, but I won the teamwork award. I was awarded more than just an award, I was awarded a job, an internship and then a job. So I just really thank these guys for everything they've taught me, um, a, a nice work environment. I've never felt uncomfortable, you know, going to work with these guys or anything like that. And I really just thank them. I just want to add one point to that because I get fired up when I hear these shows. <laughs> I, I really do. Guys, there are diamonds in the rough. 
I mean, there are young people in every school. You've got to believe them and you've got to go find them. When I met this young man, he changed my life. And every day I get a chance to work with him, I learn something from him. He, he, he gives me a, a chance to believe in these young people. And, and I want you to see that. I, I want you to feel that. That's what inspires you when you hire an intern. Is that you don't get in your little bubble with your little employees and do your little job. You hire life. You hire, you hire young people who can inspire you in your company and bring a whole different level of creativity. Guys, this is a, this is a tremendous opportunity. And I really want you to see that and want to invest in that. Don't let the money scare you. Don't let the challenge of how do we make this work. It can work. It will work. And it will benefit you. I just had to say that. Yes, sir. Thank you. to work with the JRTC internship program at the central office where I gained a lot of uh, access and knowledge to the um, system as a whole and understanding JRTC. As I said, I'm part of the Baker RTC um, at my school, so it allowed me to see the bigger picture. And I was very impressed and very uh, uh, um, grateful for being able to be a part of this. Thank you. with the grind with Mr. Daryl Campbell, CEO of Statewide Insurance, and I spent that month with him and under his awesome staff. Later in the summer, I also joined Mr. Tim Finnegan. I started my second internship with Seymour TV, and I continued that through the fall. much for taking time out of your schedule to come and learn about our internship program. I hope that you see and hear the passion and the positive impact and relationships that have been built between our partners as well as our students and the Mobile County Public Schools. And we look forward to you joining the team and please enjoy the refreshments, ask any questions, and also be sure before you leave that you give that half sheet of paper to the ladies at the welcome table.